What's going on, peeps? I was recently introduced to a Welsh rapper named Ren Gill through his song, Hi Ren. It took a while for me, admittedly, to get used to his voice because he's got a very strong accent, but once it clicked, it clicked, and now I just really love his stuff. But who is he? He is a independent rapper residing in Wales with over a million monthly listeners on Spotify. He is a multi-talented musician who writes and also produces all of his songs. He's had several viral singles on YouTube, such as Hi Ren, that have built him a sizable fan base. Despite being an undeniably talented musician, he has gone through years of mental health struggles including his battle with Lyme disease that occupied half of his lifetime. He uses his music that has generated a strong following in recent years to bring awareness to mental health issues. Now, why did I decide to talk about Ren today? Boo-hoo, he's a rapper that struggles with depression. What makes him stand out? Well, Ren Gill has a hell of a story that I want to tell in this video as well as some insight into his discography that has quite a lot of layers to unwrap. Let's dive in. Ren Aaron Gill was born on March 29th. 1990 in Bangor, Gwynedd, Wales. He is currently 33 years old. During his early years, his family moved to the village of Duran, which is located on the island of Anglesey in Wales. From there, he met his best friend, Joe Hughes, in 1998. Towards the new millennium, he was given a guitar that he basically carried around anywhere he went. He learned to play the guitar by slowing down Jimi Hendrix and John Frusciate's songs. By 12, he aspired to be a musician and sold CDs of hip-hop drum beats he generated at home on his PC using Reason Studios software in 2002. He was going under the stage name Syndicate at the time. He had his live debut at the age of 13 when he sang Morningstar by AVI in 2003. As he grew more as a musician, he would create some more light-hearted songs to make a joke out of his friends at parties, one of them being Streetlights, later featured on his debut album. His friends Joe and Sagar were his first big supporters, who convinced him to play for them at social events. Sadly, his parents divorced tearing his family apart. He still focused on his musician aspirations as he knew he had something. Ren located to Bath to pursue a music performance degree at Bath Spa University in 2008. To fund his career, he attempted to work at a co-op supermarket before being fired for constantly being hung over and not getting along with his crewmates. Instead, he turned to busking on the street, hoping to be recognized. Thus, he formed the band Trick the Fox with bassist Charlie Fowler. The two proceeded to perform on the streets of Bath together. Everything was moving swimmingly. He was healthy, going to the gym six days a week, and his band was growing a small audience. Until he woke up one morning with the worst hangover he had ever experienced. My life changed overnight. I woke up one morning feeling like I'd been spiked. My personality disappeared. I was having muscle spasms, and I kept having panic attacks. I thought it was just the flu, but the feeling didn't fade. At first, he had no clue what he was dealing with, and nobody was giving him answers. He was having trouble attending his lectures at Bath Spa, and his body started to develop intolerances to various foods. He had no choice but to fight through the pain. His band expanded their social media presence as the 2010s opened up, but one incident on December 27th would change Ren's life forever. His longtime best friend, Joe Hughes, had taken his own life, jumping from the Menai suspension bridge. This shook Ren to the core, resulting in him writing a song in his memory. This would be Freckled Angels, which he performed at his funeral. Ren said it's one of the most important songs he has ever written. Trick the Fox would continue on in memory of their lost friend. Their ambition would be worth it as music expert Eric Apulay discovered the band in 2011 as they were busking one of his own tunes. Then, they ended up signing a recording contract with Sony Records. Ren went to London with Eric and began work on his debut album with fellow Trick the Fox member Charlie Fowler at Sanctuary Studios in South London. They began writing, touring, and recording songs. Through all of this, he was still sick, but attempted to hide it to fulfill his contract needs. It even resulted in him throwing up blood. Sadly, Ren grew far too ill to complete his debut album, where the band agreed to go on a hiatus. Ren would return to Wales with his mother. He was bedridden for up to 23 hours a day. When he visited Belgium in 2011, he was originally diagnosed with depression, bipolar disorder, and chronic fatigue syndrome. There were no tests of Lyme disease in the UK, as it was considered to be too rare in the country. This mystery illness had completely halted his life. This would lead to him being dropped from Sony in 2013 after his contract expired, not helped by his forced inactiveness. Ren located to Brighton, where he continued to struggle with health concerns for the next following years. He was dealing with autoimmunity disease and psychosis. 
He still wrote music, but it wasn't going to be leaving his bedroom for a while. On July 1st, Trick the Fox officially disbanded as Ren's condition wasn't getting any better. He was now solo, producing and performing music whenever he felt more comfortable. This was until his health declined again. Back to his bedroom. This allowed him to open a new YouTube channel, Me vs. Me, documenting his health journey. Then he opened a short-lived blog, Kid Life Crisis, in 2014 to do challenges he had never done before. It was a solo year for him, but he did end up meeting BB Lee, who would later become his girlfriend. Fast forward to 2015, Ren was unsure if he would live to see 30 years old. He published a video on his channel in February, pleading for help, some type of miracle. This video ended up being seen by a doctor in Los Angeles who arranged a stem cell treatment. Out of fear, he polished up his first album, Freckles Angels, he had been working on for the past few years to leave something behind if he was to pass. He opened a GoFundMe as well. During the summer, there were changes in his therapy, and the progressing Lyme disease began to affect his brain, causing Ren to develop new neurological symptoms like night terrors, tics, and OCD, and Tourette's syndrome-like symptoms. He was fighting for it though. He announced that his debut album was almost complete. This music is what kept him sane, despite having next to no energy. After suffering from illness for seven years straight, Ren would finally know the truth of his condition. On November 28th, he was officially diagnosed with bacterial infection, Lyme disease. He was looking for medical specialist advice in Brussels that revealed he was misdiagnosed in 2011 and that he had been living with Lyme disease unchecked the entire time. This gave him closure, now knowing the name of the mystery illness that had been giving him such hell. His debut solo album, Freckled Angels, was finally released on January 2nd, 2016. The self-release CD had 16 songs, including roughly half of those recorded for the Trick the Fox album. Ren was given permission to use them by Eric. Ren also dedicated the album and the title track to Joe Hughes, his late friend. With that, I fulfill my promise. I promise you that I would dedicate my first entire album to you. And now that it's finally done, I have kept that promise. This is Joe's album. In addition, Ren stated that proceeds from this album would be invested into medical care and will help raise awareness for more effective treatments for Lyme disease. This album also inspired the name of a restaurant in Menai Bridge Anglesey. Let's go through the album, shall we? Songs like Make My Way, It's Alright, Pocket Full of Pain, and Fire touch on struggles with dark thoughts attempting to help the listener push through the depression. They also include various electronic sounds that were a big part of 2016 and 15 music at the time, with a pitched up vocal during the hook of Make My Way. They take on a more pop rap approach. In the case of the latter song Fire, it's very pop rock inspired, with a brief nod to Michael Jackson's smooth criminal on the verse. He then compares the struggling, insecure society he is a part of to dominoes who get built up just to get knocked back down by cruel and judgmental people. It was never enough, no matter how much they tried to improve themselves. It's not all sad topics here though. There are some love songs in here, like Satellite Girl, Pixie, and Crutch. BB, who features on the latter song, became his girlfriend at the time and was dedicated to being with him during his peak struggle with Lyme disease. On the other hand, he has a breakup song which felt like a bullet in his chest. This LP began the Love Music trilogy about how much Ren loves music and embracing his skills as an artist. The instrumentals tend to be full of life to express this love with various instrumental switch ups from simple drum and bass to a rock breakdown to a trumpet section and flow switches, oh my gosh. It also includes some bizarre but clever metaphors, I've got more lines than a cocaine den. Ren was clearly born in the 1990s, which is a song where he expresses his love for the culture during that decade and how much better it is in comparison to recent years. Calvin Harris gets smoked for some reason, maybe because he wouldn't be acceptable in the 80s. The guitar rap style almost reminds me of Ed Sheeran when he goes on his own rap ventures. Streetlights is about him getting hammered like they do in Europe, you know, and living in the moment. Fly Away touches on escapism. The meaning of life to him is to just live. After getting this record off his chest, Ren released his first official single, Jessica, on February 15th, 2016. He continued to get more help as well as publicizing a new GoFundMe and being interviewed by the Daily Mail. He received his first stem cell treatment and learned his symptoms were caused by seven years of untreated Lyme disease itself due to his immune system's response to the disease. After returning to the United States following treatment, he was feeling a lot more strong. Strong enough to leave his house and live somewhat normal again in August. His stamina increased 
but his digestion worsened, later being diagnosed with mast cell activation disorder. Skipping to next year, Ren appeared in the movie Unrest in 2017 and his song Patience was part of the soundtrack. Ren was briefly part of Brighton-based musical group The Big Push. Glenn Chambers was the drummer and Ren, Romaine Axisa, and Gordon Kendall were the frontmen. Their busking ventures started going viral online in 2018, generating a small fan base. Throughout the year, they toured across the country with Ren barely getting any sleep on most days, which is not good for his condition. It was all worth it as their shows in 2019 began selling out. His solo music was also receiving some buzz. He put out the story of Jenny's Screech, a haunting narrative backed up by an eerie music video of him in the street. Excellent song, definitely recommend it. Another big hit he had in 2019 was Money Game, which aggressively attacks capitalism. It's a more political song, that's for sure, but it inspired more songs such as Part 2. It mentions the fact that while many people are quick to point out the corrupted people who profit from capitalism, few people actively try to reform the system and instead want to profit from it, keeping it alive via their compliance. Next up is the year of 2020. <laughs> you already know what happened this year. In response to COVID, the big push was forced to postpone further shows. Instead, they put on virtual performances in their living room streamed on Live Nation. This extra time from the pandemic gave Ren a chance to branch out solely, producing demos Do Not Share Volume 1 and 2. The first volume kicks off with Life is Funny that features some wild triple time flows and switch-ups that keep the listener engaged, spitting every syllable clearly. I don't know much of the French language, but Ren appears to know a bit of it on French song. Dear God sees Ren asking several questions to God, who he admits he only goes to when he's feeling blue. He questions why there is this evil in this world, if there is truly an afterlife, and how long he has to hold on, and why a girl he knew just recently lost her baby. The thing is that the plan God has for all of us is unknown. It's certainly a message all people who have some sort of religious belief can relate to. Sometimes in life, you just gotta hold on to see what's next. When half your life is spent with death, you do not fear the reaper. A great quote to lead you into volume two of the demo sessions. Ready for you speaks on the feeling of being struck down several times before finding a way to come back for more. He finds his way to shore even in a boat without an oar. Ren struggles with taking diazepam, which is supposed to treat people with high levels of anxiety. The substance, however, has a lot of health risks as displayed through Ren's uncanny vocal delivery. It's a self-destructive healing. He feels he needs it, even if it's hurting him. Crucify Your Culture goes political again, hitting back on consumerism, feeling everyone will believe the leader no matter how extreme the idea is. They'll have a hard time distinguishing between good and evil and the prevalent impact of greed. I noticed that these songs will often contain guitars. This includes acoustic, bass, and even electric on Heretic. Everybody Drops speaks on the struggles and challenges of life and how eventually everyone will reach a point where they have to stop and face their problems or drop. The EP ends off of a collaboration of Molly McKenna, exploring themes of regret and self-destructive behavior. Moving on from these projects, another thing to note is that Money Game Part 2, which would somehow go viral in an unexpected way. On February 27th, 2021, a YouTuber uploaded a meme using the song, which had the Nintendo character Luigi rap the seashells verse to a clone of Luigi taken from a cutscene in Super Mario Galaxy. After that, the meme spread along with other characters. On March 4th, 2021, Ren uploaded a Luigi meme to his own Instagram account, embracing the humor of it. With COVID guidelines starting to be lifted, the big push could finally perform live again. To promote their EP Can Do Will Do, they announced their six-day UK headline tour and it was completely sold out. It was a major success for the band, encouraging Ren to try again. For years I've tolerated living in a sick body because despite my pain, I was still able to push through and make music which was much more than I could have dreamed. However, I know deep down if I try, I can uncover a whole new layer of healing. I know this because I've seen others do it. I know it because I went from barely being able to stand up to take a shower to being able to perform to rooms full of thousands of people. I know if I try hard enough, 
I can get to an even stronger and better place. With this, he put out chalk outlines of Chinchilla later in the year. He was still dedicated to being treated as he wasn't 100% yet due to MCAD. This resulted in a months-long treatment with Dr. Bruce Hoffman in Canada during 2022. Now, the decision would come with a cost. He knew he had to depart from the big push and be away from Brighton's busking scene during his treatment. So Ren began writing and recording songs that would later be included on his second album, Sick Boy, as well as filming music videos with friends to maintain an online presence while he was out. He was dedicated to being fully independent, not letting any label control him. He got out of a contract with his former management company. On September 9th, 2022, the Big Push played their final show at the Brighton Dome. The group had officially disbanded as all the members were set to go on different paths at that point. It was now time for Ren to enter a new era for his music, starting off with the production of the soon-to-be viral sensation, Hi Ren. It was first teased at a live show at a songwriting showcase other songs live. A week later on December 15th, 2022, he self-released a music video for that song, Hi Ren. It is about the internal struggle between his devilish, self-doubting side and the angelic, hopeful side, with Ren playing both sides, swapping between vocal styles. This is a man who has gone through difficult times fought against diseases and autoimmunity, but still dares to look within himself and find strength to move forward. The lyrics remind us that only by understanding our darker and lighter self, we can truly heal and experience the hope and strength that comes from life and struggles. It also calls back to Money Game Part 2, when he uses the term she shells seashells on the seashore and how useless the selling is due to supply and demand on the second verse. His evil side pretty much mocks him for this message, as well as calling him out for taking on ideas like a battle with his subconscious, similar to Eminem. The song would spread like wildfire, as more and more YouTube reactors gave their thoughts on the 9 minute art piece. Safe to say, it was a viral smash, gaining 6.8 million YouTube views in 2 months. The video for High Ren was honored with an honorable mention in the Best European Music Video category at the Prague Music Video Awards in April 2023, and it was nominated for the Camera Image 2023 Best Music Video Award in October 2023. Ren was also named as one of Atwood's Magazine Artists to Watch in 2023, as well as Sussex Best Artist by Sociedé Magazine. Since becoming ill, Ren has said that his life and work has been closely linked to finding better ways to treat mental illness. In June 2023, Ren presented a check for $20,000 to the RNLIT team at Anxi in saving lives in their efforts to find his friend Joe. It was stressful to follow up such a massive milestone for his musical career. He knew that he had to make Sick Boy the best project he had ever made. He reached a million YouTube subscribers in July, which he saw as the perfect time to announce that leading up to the album's release, he would release a new song every week during August. Two singles, Suicide and Murderer, both entered the top 100 in the UK singles chart. His first album in eight years, Sick Boy, was released on October 13th, 2023. The hour-long record starts off with a harmonic a cappella in Welsh before diving into a track that is absolute chaos, from theatrical to more drill-inspired production. It's a giant track that discusses his feelings living with Lyme disease, in a sense, that captures the entire vibe of the album, throwing you headfirst into the experience. He ends the track by exploring all seven deadly sins. The title track discusses his frustration with the health institution trying to cure his number of chronic medical illnesses. Pills won't solve every problem. Then comes Black Skinhead and inspired track Animal Flow and The Hunger as he asserts his dominance over his forthcoming competition with aggressive, fast flows. Reggae inspired murder and what you want take on a similar topic, as well as illest of our time, a double entendre for being ill in terms of poetry, but also mentally. Next is the third installment of the Money Game series, which might be the darkest one yet. Ren tells the story of a character named Jimmy and explores the destructive nature of greed, power, and the pursuit of wealth. You see, Jimmy excels academically in a technology and amasses wealth quickly at a young age. His father instead instilled in him the belief that money is the key to everything and that he should take advantage of every opportunity he gets. As Jimmy grows older, his pursuit of money became increasingly ruthless and corrupt. He deals in arms sales and participates in criminal activities which eventually leads to his involvement in the drug trade. 
Despite his wealth and success, Jimmy is consumed by his addictions, a lust for power. This leads to him standing against the cartel, leading to him being shot in the leg. At 39, he realizes the destructive nature of greed and how it has negatively impacted him in society as a whole. He now remains paralyzed in a hospital bed, thinking about his choices and their consequences, ultimately leading to him at 45 with a gun pointed at his own head, suggesting that he has reached a point of despair and regrets his involvement in gambling. He regrets being part of the money game. This is a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked greed and the harmful effects it can have on individuals and society. Lost All Faith in Genesis expresses Ren's self-doubt and trouble navigating through life. Suicide is obviously going to be a dark track here where he pays tribute to his friend who committed the act a decade ago. Uninvited takes a break from heavier topics to discuss something more positive, love. I also noticed that this song and AMP member Phantom's mind control track have the same exact instrumental. Take that how you like it, I don't really mind if you're still undecided, please just know. Speaking of radio ready hits, there is Down on the Beat that is a pretty good flip on a garage track with pumping bass and carefree lyrics, which is funny because it is followed by Masochist, which is all about killing. Not literally, it's a metaphor for this man's own demons. He's taking a stand against his demons before they take over his thoughts again. He seems to be having a hard time as he struggles not to lose his mind on Loco. Ren is just aggressive in this second half, isn't he? Wicked Way sees himself fall off the path of righteousness into forbidden territory. The devilish sound effects he makes really sells it. This guy would be a great voice actor, my gosh. Ending the album is the second part of the title track where Ren delves more into his mindset and his coping mechanisms, coping with the idea of money and success, which he realizes he is achieving. He believes people focus more on profit than basic human interaction. He challenges the listener to take a stand before ending off with an acceptance of his current self. This journey appears to be over as he repeats, it's done. Following its release, Ren's album was in a fierce battle for number one in the United Kingdom, where there were less than 400 chart units that separated it from Rick Astley's Are We There Yet? Ren was unable to promote his album as he was in Canada going through an ongoing treatment, and attributed his success to his fan base and promotion. Again, Against all odds, Sick Boy debuted at number one with 18,000 units first week after pushing 6,000 copies in the last day of tracking. In the United States, Ren debuted at number four on the Emerging Artist Charts, and the album would debut at number 137 on the Billboard 200, earning 9,000 equivalent album units. Crazy how, a decade ago, this man wasn't even sure if he was going to reach the age of 30. Now, he has a number one album and several accolades to his name at the age of 33. Beautiful. Okay, this was a long one, but I seriously hope you all enjoyed this video. It was a heavy one, but as always, it ended with a positive result. I strongly encourage everyone that is going through mental issues to keep on pushing. Ren Gill's story is a testament that you should never give up on your dreams. Anything is possible if you put in the work. You may feel like you're on your deathbed, but just know that there is life at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for making it to the end of this. I loved covering this artist and his beyond inspiring journey. Big shout out to his fandom page for allowing me to acquire a lot of information about him. Give his songs a listen. I seriously recommend him. If you're a fan of this artist, share this video with another fan. Please leave a like, subscribe for more base content. Remember to love all. Peace. Yeah.